Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope your day is as good as it possibly can be today. I'm about to just give you 15 minutes where you can just forget about everything else and just have a good time with us. Uh, Lori is here because Jay is still out sick. No worries, wish him best in the comments, but he's getting better. He's not got a terrible thing, just a little bit of a head virus thing. Uh, he felt great today, but I told him to give him one more day. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing out of there. So Jay will be back tomorrow. In the meantime, you've got myself and Lori and uh, Bruce and Jessica are here too. I'm gonna hand the camera off to Lori here and I'm gonna follow the, this way. Again, uh, we wanna just get a little socialization on these iguanas and I wanted to give you a little update on how Heinz, the crimson albino that lost its tail, is actually doing. And you can see he's doing very, very well chunky as could be. When an iguana loses its tail, the problem can be is that they can stress out and stop eating, and that's when they're a problem. This guy is just a little chubber and chowing down food a lot, but we're continuing to try to habituate him. And if you notice how I'm trying to handle this, I'm not grabbing him, I'm not restraining him, I'm slowly letting him go, and you can see in just no time, he actually calms down. That's how you actually work with monitor lizards, with iguanids, and most other lizards, and even crocodilians, is you never want to restrain them, you want them to feel Feel like it's their thing and just slowly work with them and over time he's going to continue to say oh that wasn't that bad and he's going to get tamer and tamer so as this guy has his tail growing back and his tail will probably grow back mostly it'll be a little bit different color it won't be as bright unfortunately but you can even see a little bit of a nub right there where it's already starting to grow only after a couple days which is really good and I just wanted to update you on the fact that it's doing so well it's eating you can see how chubby it is and again the habituation with me socializing him is something that I'm so excited about. You can see how just in a matter of minutes how absolutely calm this guy gets. And you can kind of use that technique to do a lot of things. Now some things don't calm down as quick as this guy does, but the goal in the future is to get to a point where he doesn't freak out at all. I can just lift him up and take him right out and he calms down. And that's again like I've been mentioning in the last couple vlogs about creating threads of amazing experiences for these animals. And I couldn't be more happy with how beautiful Heinz here is. Even though he doesn't have a tail right now, like I said, he'll grow back and he is a wonderful animal. Looks like you've got some help today, <coughs> Lori. Well, kind of, I guess you could call her help. Is she, is she gonna be cleaning and feeding? <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be getting in my way, is what she's gonna be doing. <laughs> she wants some attention I know. Oh, well, business as usual here, you know, things don't stop uh, no matter what's going on. So uh, obviously you have Kluber work today. What are you doing? Yes, uh, I said yesterday, so I'm going through spot cleaning, um, you know, keeping track, looking at stuff, getting a game plan, because next week we start putting males and females together. So I'm actually pretty excited. I organized them all the other day, so I got my groups together. How's looking good? Yeah, actually, things look really good. We got a lot of stuff up That's that awesome. we didn't have last year. Oh, some We've got stuff. some, yeah, some, some cow kings and some different stuff that is, I'm excited to well, that's start cool. breeding. Oh, here comes your other dog. Yes, yes, that's my pain in the butt too. This yeah. is one, this that's, is two. two <laughs> and for people that don't know, I mean, these guys don't seem to even mind each other. I mean, you know, they just kind of ignore each other. You can see Speedy's just walking on through and uh, Phoebe's just interested in getting attention from mama. So, yeah. all right, I'll let you get to work. I know you got a lot to do. Let's go. Get in here. Come on. Keep going, buddy. Keep going. Keep going. Thank you. I told you, I've been training this guy. He went into the offices. I told him, let's go and get over here. And uh, now he's just coming over and hanging out. So uh, I tell you, you could train a tortoise. I'm telling you, I'm going to have this thing doing tricks by the end of the summer. Take a look at these mossy frogs right here. <laughs> They're so absolutely adorable. There's actually four of them in here. Oh, there's another one right over here. Oh, there's two of them. There's the one right here and then one right over here. So there's four mossy frogs in here. And I love this whole enclosure. It's just really cool. I mean, they're neat little animals for sure. And then of course I wanted to show you my little emerald tree boa baby that's doing really well eating and just crushing it. So that's really cool. And again, that's one of the things that I'm loving right now is spending even more time just kind of hanging out with the animals. You know, I'm usually so busy with all the events that we do and obviously being open at the Reptarium. It's, uh, I miss it. I miss it 
more than I could ever tell you, but it does give me time to kind of just enjoy things a little bit more here without all the hustle and bustle of things. I mean, look at Perdita, how absolutely incredible she is. But I did want to ask you guys, I don't know if you know this about me, but I don't watch TV. Like, I, I haven't watched a series in forever. I take that back. I actually did watch one series recently on Netflix called Lock and Key, which was absolutely, it's the first series I probably watched in five years. I need your advice and other people might too, down in the comments, let me know like a great Netflix series or Amazon, whatever you watch thing. Let me know what I can start watching. I'm gonna try to see if I can spend some time with my family watching something, as well as maybe people in the comments can read through and uh, together we can decide what we can watch and who knows, maybe I'll give you an update on how I feel about things. But uh, I just need to uh, mentally get through this because you gotta remember guys, I am a person that stays busy all the time. I'm a person that stays busy all of the time. So having any idle time, isn't really good for me mentally, so uh, help me out with what I should watch. Down here with the ball python, of course this is a pastel chocolate ball python, and it's bred to a banana chocolate spinner, which means that there's a chance for the Barney ball. Well, the truth is we have so many gravid ball pythons right now. It's absolutely incredible. As a matter of fact, this is the banana chocolate spinner here, and this is actually a chocolate king spin, which is a spider, a pinstripe, a lesser, and a pastel. And uh, Mary did such a great job of working on these animals and getting them into a position where there's a big majority of them that were gravid. Of course, I've been excited, I'm not gonna lie, to get in here and actually work with these guys. Of course, it's just a big pastel and a Woma lesser pinstripe, and I get to kind of finish the ball python breeding season. But don't think that I'm not gonna appreciate everything that Mary did for it. This is just an Enchi ball python, and again, it's just blowing up. If you look through here, all these check marks, check marks done, check marks, check marks, check marks, check marks, check marks, all these, those are the animals that I'm basically almost done breeding or at a point where I believe they will go no matter what happens. You know, whether I breed them or not, they're probably gonna go. Because they're in advance of 22, 24 millimeters, this is actually an Enchi het piebald that's bred to a pastel piebald ball python. So I can get some pastel Enchi piebalds. I mean, it just goes on. You know, look at this is actually a calendar, which is a calico spider ball python. It's not a really big animal, but you can see that bowl wrapping. That's a really good example of like cool seeking bowl wrapping, which usually means animals are gearing up for an ovulation. So uh, again, it's gonna be an amazing year. And it's been so much fun for me to get back in here, spend daily time with these animals, uh, finishing out the breeding season. I cannot believe egg season is just literally within a week or two, we'll have our first clutches. So I've gotta get through all these animals, get some mail switched around and just check everything. Uh, it's It's been a lot of fun, guys. So as much as I'm sad to see Eric and Mary moving on, uh, it's given me an opportunity to kind of reconnect with these animals and finish out the breeding season. to spend as much time as I can just appreciating the beauty of the animals that we're working with these days. And uh, with this little slowdown, it's given me the opportunity to take a little bit of a breath and just realize how lucky I am to spend time around these amazing animals. Of course, this is a gray banded king snake. This is the alterna phase, which just basically means that it has either little to no red on it. Now, sometimes they'll have like skinny black bands and then skinny red bands, and then that can be alternating. And that might even be why they call them alterna. You can see this guy just has a little bit of red on his neck, but other than that, it's pretty much just black and gray. And then of course, this is what they would call the Blair's phase, which is that big orange banding with the triads of black, that band around them. Both are absolutely amazing, and they're from West Texas. They're a king snake, unbelievably cool. Now the only problem is, is sometimes these guys are lizard eaters when they're babies, so they could be a little tricky to get going. But once they get onto rodents, they are absolutely bulletproof and amazing animals. We have some adults up to size to produce this year. It's the 
first time we probably have produced Grey Banded Kings, or well, hopefully we'll produce Grey Banded Kings in probably about eight or nine years. So I'm pretty excited about the potential. Kind of excited because today is actually my first virtual tours. And what I mean is we're gonna actually do some virtual tours here where, you know, and for those of you guys that are wondering like, what in the heck are you talking about virtual tours? Basically it's a FaceTime, it's a, a Skype, it's a Zoom, it's a, a whatever platform we need to use to kind of connect with you guys and you get me one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, or however many people on your end, but it's just us. We walk around, we look at animals, I talk, I can answer questions about your breeding or what you should get or if you have an issue. Uh, it's just an hour with me and showing off the Reptarium and I think it's going to be a really fun thing to do. So we have two of them to do today. Just wrapped up those two virtual tours. Definitely gonna take me some time to kind of get used to it. It was a lot of fun. The first one was a family. Thank you guys if you're watching. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We did a Skype where we were up on the TV. It was a little bit complicated because we had to have them talk to Lori. Then Lori conveyed to me because we had an echo, but we had a great time. And then the second one was just a FaceTime. Super fun. Uh, by the way, Ivy is opaque, so she's in shed and she's in the water. I'm very curious what she's gonna do next, right? Is she gonna stay in the water to shed? Is she gonna come out to shed? Obviously, I think she's gonna shed pretty well because she's obviously very moist because she's been in the water, but it's pretty interesting. All these new things that were experienced at the Reptarium for the very first time, you know, how the animals are doing. I mean, like, again, Cupcake is down now, but she's half the time is up in here, which blows me away. By the way, Darwin, the Centralian, again, when it was over at the other Reptarium, didn't eat for like two months, then started eating, and then we moved it back to BHB because we just replaced it with actually toothless, believe it or not. But it's eating now already in the first week. Again, we had Al Machino. He ate finally after about three weeks of being over here. So it's an interesting thing just to kind of learn this stuff and see how things are reacting. And so far, it's been overwhelmingly good. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to think if there's anything left. Oh, you know what? There is the only two animals that didn't eat this week were the black-headed pythons. But ironically enough, both of them, which by the way, look at them just cruising around. I mean, they are so cool. But both of them are actually going into shed right now. So hopefully when they shed, they'll eat. But other than that, every animal over here here is now eating and doing well, so that's pretty awesome. Oh, by the way, really quick, Eric and Noah and I was jumping in for a little bit, actually are downstairs doing a podcast right now, so I'll put a link in the description, you can watch that podcast, it was really fun. I joined them for about half it, they're still going, so uh, it, it's always fun to have Eric and Noah together. It's actually pretty beautiful out here, the sun is starting to go down, it's been a long day of work, but uh, it's been amazing, and I'm so thankful that I get to not only share my life with you guys, but also get to do something that I truly love, and. Uh, it definitely keeps me busy in these times and I'm thankful for that and again want to be here as much as I can for you guys and again I want to just keep on bringing it up but let me know what else I can do for you guys let me know in the comments what you would like to see over the coming days because we can't travel we can't really adventure so we have to be here so I want to know what you guys want to see for me so that I can help take your mind off of the things in life and remember guys it's not going to be easy, but we're going to get through this. We will get to the other side. And if we could do it together without trying to create toxic communities and negativity, do the best you can do to enjoy the things. Enjoy your family, your friends, your animals, all those things. And together, we will get to the other side of this. So thank you for joining me, and thank you for all of your support. Stay safe out there. I love you guys so much. Like I mentioned before, did a podcast today. Do a podcast at least twice a week. Right over here, you can subscribe to it. It's called Checking In. You can roll through and entire playlist right here. On this side, you can subscribe to the vlog channel, turn the post notifications on. Jay will be back tomorrow, so the videos will get a little bit better again. I apologize about that. Have an absolutely wonderful day or the best you possibly can. I'm here for you guys, and I love you, and I will see you tomorrow.